107. 107. Well, I rewatched some parts from the Kenny Lehman podcast. Yeah. I was a fat bastard. You were a heavy man. Don't get down on yourself calling yourself fat. I did it for years. I was a fat fuck. Don't call yourself that. Dude, Only I, could, I could call I, you. I could barely like move my face. Like I could barely talk right. Bro, you were a thick boy. You were a thick boy. But inside I, there was an Iron Man. Deep down. Deep down in there. He's, he's had to peel away the layers. You were like an onion, Bob. Dude, like I, an onion. There, I only rewatched that one time, and like I was just, I was like zipping through it, and there was like things I said in there that I just, I can't believe it. I like just, what? Just like at the end, like when uh, we were talking about Murph and like him being a big dude, big fella, and and uh, I was like, I feel like like I could be that guy, and like Kenny's like, dude, he's like, I feel it too, and you're like, bro, I'd support that. He's like, I'd support if you went after an Iron Man. <laughs> And, like, I'm, like, watching this all play out. I'm, like, dude, literally, that was that moment. It clicked. It is wild. Very wild. It is probably one of the wildest things I've seen up close, other than myself, with my own, because I know the lengths I went to, and I'm literally watching the lengths you're going through as a grown man. Yeah. Like, I still consider myself to be a young man when I was doing all that crazy shit. Yep. This is fucking batshit crazy as a grown man. Like, I got some aches and pains, motherfucker. Yeah. And you're... What, what was that date? It was April... April 14th. April 14th, April 14th yeah. dude. And so, they did the Iron Man in November. Had that meeting, <laughs> had that fucking podcast with Kenny, and I was signed up by July 1st. Holy fuck. Yeah, because I remember I wanted to get... I was already... Uh, running and biking I wasn't in the water yet and I was thinking about an Ironman I was like I need to get in the water one time just to know I'm not going to drown and then I'm going to sign up and that's exactly what that I did that was the same time you and I were fuck- I was fucking with you about you being like yeah I'm buoyant motherfucker <laughs> I can like, float I'm like what are you talking about like, get out of here <laughs> you're like yeah I'm a fucking phenomenal floater <laughs> I'm like you can't what are you talking about I'm less buoyant now <laughs> yeah no shit yeah yeah <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah, that was I don't even like I can't, I don't even look at myself the same way from back then. With all the shit that we've heard from people about bringing the podcast back. We got so much stuff to oh, go over. Dude, it's crazy. So much. Yeah. Well, I might as well do the introduction. Yep. Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I am your host Seth Frost here with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Hello. And our esteemed, distinguished, ruggedly handsome, well-endowed Shayner. Hi. It's good to, good to have you back. Yeah, it's really good to see you, Shane. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. But we've been discussing, everybody has let us know how much they missed the podcast. And yeah. let us tell you, we have missed it too. Fuck yeah. You guys are the reason that um, we have all of these great things at this company. It is pretty incredible. However, we do have to grow. And, has, and how Bob has put it to us over the past uh, like six weeks, we aren't just the pretty faces. <laughs> We're the ones doing the fucking work on the back end, too. We're not just a bunch of jerk-off owners who don't actually work this company. This company is run by the owners and all of our employees. It takes every single person here doing their part to make this bitch run. And the growth that we have experienced is a little intense. <laughs> we have talked about it uh, I, like briefly on, the, on, on Instagram and uh, like we're we're growing. We have we have put so many new things into our company to help it grow to the next level. Mm-hmm. It is uh, it was really intense. Yeah, really intense. Yeah, and I'd probably say the person's job that I didn't want the most was Shane's. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. It's really good to see you. You got some color to your skin. Yep. I don't have a fuck you look on your face every morning now. There was some mornings, everybody. There was some mornings. Very trying. Like, like it's great. We have this awesome company, and we do all these things, but it's still a lot of work. It's still a lot of work, and things get intense. Things get overwhelming. Things get fucking overbearing because we want to perform for our people, which is all of you listening. Yeah. We want to do really cool shit. And at the point that we are and the growth that is incurring right now, occurring right now, boy, it's intense. Yeah, I mean, I, I everyone's definitely seeing – 
that how big we are as a brand now yeah. it, it's in it's in every store in the fucking country yes you guys feel it yes. but uh, and we'll get into this more in a little bit but the demo crew elite was in and when we were talking to steve steve works for a very large distribution company beverage distribution uh, beverage distribution and hundreds of employees yes and what he saw when he was in here he's like i cannot believe you guys handle the amount of shit that you do with a team of 40 yes because he's like we can barely handle it and we got hundreds of employees we've been in business for decades and you guys somehow figured this out in three years to run on 40 people yes and and boiled down to whenever he learned our practices and everything that shane has implemented with the new software system and how <laughs> from for every every single aspect of a company from sales to shipping, to customer service, to finances, to um, everything. everything. The whole look of our company, uh, numbers on paper in like a, like pull up our company on the screen now. Mm -hmm. It is all connected and Shane has been the hub of it all. So for weeks, Shane was literally answering every single manager's question mm -hmm. at this company. Yep. Every single morning. Trained it's, every department. Every single department was trained by Shane. Yep. Man, I feel like I feel like I owe you something, bud. No. <laughs> a lot of closed door mornings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like Steve had said, it was he saw everything, and at what it boils down to is what uh, the ownership at this company, you, Mike, and Pat, what you guys have done from an ownership perspective of putting these things into place and us talking and saying we're going to spend the money mm -hmm. to put this put this software into our company to make it better for our employees to run more soundly and to grow another 100 percent next year yeah. like you can't you we would not be able to do that without this <laughs> so it was a good job <sighs> that was eight solid months it was it was it was nuts like, because I, I wasn't involved as much because I'm not Mr. Tech Savvy. Whereas just watching and listening and learning and seeing it all, it was unfucking believable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. But it, it was that, that crucial, crucial time and decision to implement it. If we would have waited three months longer than what we did, no. we, it would be a fucking nightmare right yeah. now. So we, have, we are now. Good job, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so now we are back. Yep. <laughs> so, um, but I have missed the podcast like we were discussing, yeah. just going over, we just said before we started this, a little nervous. Yeah. A little bubble guts there. Uh, for sure. A couple little extra toots this morning. Yep. Yep. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Seriously. I was, I was thinking Fancy. about it. Yep. And it's it's great because what people, I believe, has mi have missed this as m so much was us bullshitting yeah. Every morning while they're on the way to work, while they're at work, about the good shit. Yep. Because there is a lot of bullshit in the world, and what we do here is push the good shit into your life. Mm -hmm. We produce great products. We produce great apparel. We produce, like, our mentality is to be a hard-working motherfucker, mm -hmm. to love your family, work hard for all the things you want in life, and not settle for anything less. And that's what, and that's exactly what we stand for. We've stood for that since day fucking one, and through all the trying things that are going on right now in the world, that is the most important thing to be. For sure. Yep. It's been great. Yep. We've had product launches. Man, we have had we've had product launches and we haven't done podcasts. <laughs> you know, fuck. That's fucking how busy things have been. You guys are out of your mind. Who fucking does that? I know. Nuts. Yeah, multiple products. Prepping for all the fucking holiday festivities. We have, so, I mean, might as well go over it. Yep. Um, like you were saying, you, you were listening to Kenny's podcast. Yeah. There has been, uh, I've gotten messages from people of them just sending pictures of you back then. Yeah. One dude sent me a picture of you from 14. Just showed up on my DMs. I'm like, why the fuck is this guy sending me this picture? And I think it's because whenever they look at your Instagram now, they're like, that's not the fucking same guy. No. That's not the same guy. There's no way. <laughs> It's wild. Dude, it's really wild because at that time, so what, last April of 2020? Yeah. Yeah, that was April of 2020. Yeah. I was my most out of shape because like a year or two before that, 
like when we were shooting tons of YouTube videos, I was training with yeah. you every time we yeah. were in. I was big, strong, and I was in shape. Yeah, you, you were, yeah. And then... It was a blip. Then there was like a six, eight, 12 month period where I just kind of, I thought I was working out. I thought I was training. Yeah. You were doing a good job though. I was really thick. Yeah, but to, in comparison to what you do right now is astronomical. Yeah, yeah. You can't compare Your the light two. day is some people's most intense training ever. Yep. <laughs> like you're like, yeah, today's light day. I'm going to run nine miles. And I'm like... That's what I did this morning. If you told me, Seth, your your day today is running nine miles, I'd be like, I don't think I'm making it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to. Can I split that up into three workouts? Right. And even then, I don't know if I'd make it. Yep. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. what you're doing, your light days, and your training in comparison to anything you've previously done, or as a matter of fact, for fucking 99% of the population. Yeah. Like I'm in pretty good fucking shape. You're in great shape. I'm in I'm in pretty good shape. Yep. However, <laughs> in comparison to you, I'm like it's like whew, Yeah. I consider myself to be in the best cardiovascular shape I've ever been in in my life. Mm -hmm. And your daily routine is like just it's mind blowing. Dude, it, it 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 I get I don't realize it. Like I do. Like I'll I'll see the workout after the fact and I'm like yeah, I'm like, did I just do that? Huh. Did I really run that fast for mm. that long? No shit. Like, I don't think it's real either. I had the epiphany not long ago whenever I was doing cardio, and I'm like, man, I got to fucking start running. I got to be more <laughs> functional. I got to be able to go for a jog and be able to handle two to three miles. Mm -hmm. All right, so I can do that. Well, I didn't know how fast I was fucking running. I just run in circles. Yeah. Just run in circles. I do as much hard shit in a row as possible, and then I'm like, cool, good workout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do things, but I like it, and I'm in phenomenal shape. Mm -hmm. We still don't know how fast you run, though, because we didn't race yet. <sighs> God damn it. Let me tell my story. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so I hop on the treadmill. We got that nice, what is that, a Nordic track? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Really nice treadmill. Awesome treadmill. I like it. Yeah. So I hopped on there, and I'm like, I'm going to run – quarter mile sprints mm -hmm. and see how fast it is so i ran a quarter mile at 10 miles an hour yeah i was fucking sprinting like my little legs were fucking chopping mm -hmm. ta -ta 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 -ta. like just long strides i'm like whew, like like a quarter mile i'm like fuck yeah i'm good an eighth of a mile later like i'm not okay yeah. <laughs> i might not make it don't fall don't eat shit and then i would jog at four and a half miles an hour mm -hmm. for a quarter mile mm -hmm. I didn't realize a six minute mile is 10 miles an hour. Yeah. That's when I realized, I don't know why I never did the math because I'm not a runner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. That's like figuring out how to count by 45s. You're like, oh, this is easy. Now that I, Mr. Athletic, I figured out running 10 miles an hour is six minute mile. Yeah. That shit is fucking wild. And then you're over here like, yeah, so uh, I averaged six twelves for 13 miles. I'm like, you averaged six twelve for 13 fucking miles? What are you fucking doing over there? Who are you, Speed Lightning? How's that even possible? I didn't even know your legs could move that fast. Yep. What do your inside of your legs look like? Is your dick and balls chafed? Or how's that work? Like, yeah. there's so many questions that come about because that was, I did a quarter mile mm -hmm. and I thought I was going to die. Yeah, it, dude, it's intense. And, and it kind of, that came out of nowhere for me. Like, jumping from like in the sevens down into the sixes, it, it happened almost like, not overnight, but within like a two week span. Like when I was down in Texas or before Texas, like sixes were really tough. Then I went down to Texas and trained with the team. I was like laying down 630s with the group, no problem. And then I got home and I started going sub 630. So like this morning I ran nine miles at a 610 pace. That's what I mean. Yeah. How's that even possible? Dude, I don't even know. How's that possible? 148 heart rate, like. Bro, I thought I was going to die. My heart rate had to be like a buck 80. Yeah. Yeah, Cause then I'm like jogging. I'm like, holy fuck! And then like all of a sudden, I could do it again. Cause I did, yep. um, I did quarter miles. Mm -hmm. um, I did a one mile, and then one mile, quarter mile sprint, quarter mile jog, quarter yep. mile sprint, quarter mile jog. Yep. I thought I, I didn't know if I was gonna make it the last quarter mile. Yeah, yeah, it's intense, man. Running is shit. It is. And then shit. I watch Cameron Haynes. There are certain workouts I watch that dude do, and I'm like. You look like you're literally like a fucking gazelle. Mm -hmm. You look like like it's wild. Well, the, those types of people are just 
insane because I'm I'm in incredible shape, and then you got this dude that the the sheer volume is what blows my mind. Take the paces that he he averages out of the equation. The fact that he's doing 15 to 20 miles a day, yeah, and his body's holding up. That's just mind blowing yeah, to me. That means he's an alien. Yep, another alien. Yep. Because you know he's not on a bunch of gear. Nope. <laughs> like, what are you going to say? Look, ah, Cameron Ains is fucking sauced out of his mind. It's like, no. No, he's not. No. <laughs> he's not. He's an alien. Yep. Another one. And he's not even, like, on a track. He's doing this in the fucking mountains. <laughs> he's, like, trail running that shit. It's wild. Scaling mountains, like, seven-minute miles. It's nuts. Yep. Hmm. Mind-blowing. Yeah. So, a lot has happened. A ton happened. I am... I thought I'm, I'm in good shape. I think like from a hit perspective, high intensity, that's my shit. Yeah. I did a bodybuilder style workout yesterday with our newest athlete, mm. who we're not announcing yet. Uh, he came into town. We've been shooting with him the past three days. We did a chest workout yesterday. Um, I'm might be a little sore. I bet. Might be a little sore. <laughs> I haven't done a full chest workout like that fucking few months. Yeah, months. Just because I've been working on. You know, being limber, yep. functional, fuckable, yep. good looking. <laughs> I don't want overbearing body parts. I want to be, uh, I just have a certain look that I want to attain. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it was intense. Yeah. I'm sore. I think tomorrow I'm really going to be sore because like I still have that like kind of dead feeling. Yeah. So it's like. Oh yeah, it's going to set in tomorrow. Yeah. But. Up in here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of, uh, like explosive training. Mm-hmm. Like I do a lot of squat presses. I do a lot of uh, uh, d- standing dumbbell shoulder presses, things like that. So my shoulders are in pretty good shape. Mm-hmm. A ton of pull-ups, but uh, not chest. Just not the the flies. The same volume. Fly, oh, the volume, no. Yeah. Flies beat me up. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, I bet. I haven't done a chest exercise in a year. That's what I mean. Easily. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah. we have a new axe and sledge athlete. Yes. He is. He's a pretty big deal. It's a huge deal. Pretty big deal. I'm excited. Fucking badass. We don't. He's the quiet killer. That's how I'm. That's what I'm gonna say. We gotta do the voiceover today. Mm-hmm. Quiet killer. Yep. That's what I'm calling him. So, oh yeah. So I just, I just, you know, check off all of the things I need to do for the day, and then I end. I, I do a good job. And I'm like, so that's just uh. how you become, you know, top Olympia, compl- uh, top Olympia placer, top five Olympia place. You're just checking things off your list today, huh, bud? <laughs> Really good job. Yeah. There's, there wasn't like, there was no up or down. It was just looking directly at me. Yeah. So I just make sure that I check all the things off that I have to today. Mm. Sounds like a plan, bud. That's how you do Meanwhile, it. Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> I'm going to chew on this goddamn bar today. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Listening to fucking metal that makes you want to fucking rip people's faces off. And he's just like, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good, good workout. Cool. Holy calm. Fuck. Cool, calm, but he has a fucking plan to he he his way of putting it. I'm paraphrasing it, but he just wants to be his absolute best, and he thinks that his absolute best will always be incredible for him and for the industry. And I'm like, man, that is a way to look at things. Yeah, I didn't look at things like that that way. I just wanted to be the best. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that talking to him and listening to how he spoke kind of changed my perspective on a couple of things. Yeah. Because I never really listened because he doesn't, he's quiet, dude. Mm-hmm. But his whole thing was he wants to be his absolute best. He's not going to compare himself to the number one guy right now. Because if he compares himself to the number one guy right now, it'll skew his physique. So he's going to be his absolute best. And he thinks that his absolute best is pretty fucking incredible. And it can be. And he's like, and, and if it wins, it wins. But he's like, as long as I continue to progress and get better and be better, everything will be better. I'm like, man. Fuck, give me goosebumps. What a way to look at things, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like a solid motherfucker. Because he's not letting the outside influences of the number one, number two guy change or even a guy that's an up-and-comer coming to eat his lunch or anything change his day-to-day action or his end result right his end result is his best and he thinks his best can be pretty fucking incredible awesome 
awesome way to look at things. Yeah. It made sense why we why we brought him on the team. For sure. Like I liked him. Uh, I liked his whole views on a lot of stuff, but I didn't know what made him tick and his way of thinking like that. And then once we found that out, filming the videos and talking to him, what a fucking incredible person. Oh, the the fit, uh, it solidified in my mind. Three days here, and I'm like, yep, yep. this is his spot. Because we don't have any big-name athletes, mm-hmm. like big-name athletes like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm really excited for him. Yeah. I'm really excited for everybody here. I think it's going to do a good job. Uh, all the stuff that we have planned for the next – six to eight months is going to be just it's going to go so well yeah he's a badass too yeah i'll say this as a tip he's a third generation army veteran three generations in his family that's pretty cool you don't hear that too often fuck no you don't hear that Mm -mm. it's pretty incredible to have somebody Tell stories about their grandfather, their father, and then your experiences. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and I asked him, I was like, did you, did you join the military because of that? And he's like, no. I'm like, it seemed like the, the answer was definitely going to be yes. He says, no. He's like, I love my country. And he's like, I felt like the Fuck right thing yeah. to do was to serve my country. The best way, the best way to, to show that is was to serve my country. I'm like, man, you were just chalking winds up, dude. Yeah. Just You are checking things off, bud. One hell of a model American. <laughs> Hell of a model American. (laughs) God damn it. Really good dude. We're pumped. Uh, What else? We've had fucking product releases. Ton. Flavor releases. Yeah. Everything that we are doing, everyone is killing it. And we have you guys to thank. Mm -hmm. Uh, You guys are the supporters, are the buyers, and just ton of cool shit. Yeah. The summer release for AAR went fucking crazy. Out of control. The late summer release went fucking wild. Mm -hmm. Um,. All the new cool custom shit for AAR that we have planned for you all from the October release and Black Friday. I will say, we can say, all of us can say that these are the two coolest releases we have ever done. Hands down. Hands down. The amount of custom stuff, the amount of attention to detail on the custom, and all the new added little everything to it, Mm -hmm. incredible. Yep. Uh, And for everybody... Bob and Mike have, uh, it is, I tip my hat to you, my good man. It's a little intense. Yeah. The attention to detail for custom apparel is unreal. I read all the emails. Mm -hmm. I read them all. Yeah. But I don't touch any of them. I just read them. It's a bit much. It is. And sourcing right now, because of everything going on in the economy, Mm -hmm. is a shit show. So that is one of the big reasons that we we're like, fuck it, let's manuf- let's find custom manufacturing. Yeah. It's been a big thing because sourcing, sourcing hats is a nightmare. Cannot get hats. We can't get our most popular hat right now. So no. we've had to transition to find an, a custom manufacturer for hats, which we will have for October and Black Friday. Yes. We I are. think they're better, to be honest. I think they are, too. I like the comfy fit. I like I like the look and the fitment. The fitment's a softer, more comfortable fit because I like the uh, I just like the look of them as well. Yeah, yeah. But I get a little I, I still get anxious thinking about it. No, I do too. It's it's no longer um, hey we got six weeks before the release let's pull the trigger on this. Mm-mm. It's now like okay we got three to four months to get months. this shit together. Sixteen weeks. Yeah. The planning involved is extensive, and we got. We also got new employees. Yeah. Got great new employees. Like quite a few. Yeah. I don't even know who's in the warehouse that came. We have Corey. He just got hired. Backdoor Dan. Yep. Um, he's there. <laughs> Backdoor Which, Dan, whose name's Kevin. <laughs> so, A.K.A. Kevin. <laughs> A.K.A. Squat Rat Guy. <laughs> so whenever he got hired, we knew Kevin from Legends. Yes. He would be up there. He was a crazy, crazy Olympic lifter. Amazing. Phenomenal. So limber. Yeah, like... He'd be doing like uh, like uh, fucking snatches. So and how about he was, be like, what? He was telling everybody how he's in the YouTube videos yeah. and all the old YouTube videos. Like, yeah, I'm in Seth's old YouTube videos. <laughs> and, and everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, that's me in the background in the squat rack. <laughs> and Jay, whenever, whenever, whenever uh, they were like, oh, yeah, we hired a new shipping guy. And then he goes up there and he's like, oh, it's squat rack guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'd see him in the squat rack every fucking Jay day. Jay would describe him as that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so his first day, he came in the back door rather than the front door. 
And from there on, in the shipping department, you're going to get a nickname. Yep. And uh, somebody's like, hey, what's up, Backdoor Dan? <laughs> he's like, my name's Kevin. And, he's, and they're like, no, it's not, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Pat even walked in the other day and was like, hey, what's up, Dan? And he's like, my name's Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> like dead serious like yeah, he's like dude. fuck everyone think I'm, thinks I'm Dan but that's the fun part because at the end of the day again it really fucking isn't it is intense around here yeah thousands of orders need shipped out and like if but it's still a lot of work so we better have some fun better loosen up and understand that you're coming in here and you're part of the family and mm-hmm. let's have some fun yeah, you if you if you get a nickname around here, it's it's literally the the most honorable thing you can receive uh, from yeah, us as a yeah. nickname. So we got him, and then we have uh, Big Dick Nick down the hall. Yes, he's he's part of the design team now. Literally my savior. He is <laughs> young young man. What 22, 23? twenty two, twenty three? Yeah, yeah. He just got out of. Uh, SCAD, which yeah. is big time design school for everybody who doesn't know. Big design school. I just learned all about design schools. Yep. Yep. RISD, RISD. SCAD, yep. top two schools in the nation for design. Yep. Yep. I'm excited to learn more about them. Maybe, maybe you think I might should I should probably go there. He. I at least want a shirt from there. I. You know what? We should tell him we want shirts. Yeah. Go back to your alma mater. Yep. <laughs> what is it? Savannah College of Art and Design. I think. I think. It sounded really good there, yeah, right? It sounded yeah, close. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't close look enough. It up. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. But anyway, we have hired Nicholas yeah. um, to, uh, he's Bob's right hand, mm-hmm. new designer, does, he's, we needed somebody to assist in designs to help grow the, grow the brands. Mm-hmm. Technically sound and just really good dude. Yeah, that's what we really needed. We needed the the technical aspect, mm-hmm. you know, some actual school knowledge. Yeah, because it's I mean it's already taking my work to the next level. Yeah, because he he knows things that were came from a textbook for sure. Yep, but I I didn't go to design school, which is which is crazy to me. Yeah, it is pretty wild that after learning everything that he knows and like how technically sound he is, when I sit in there, I'm like motherfucker, you are literally from school here designing. I mean, it's it's how cool is that too? Being a young man yeah. out of design school, you're from Western PA, and then you find a company that needs a designer in Western PA. Yeah, that is so unlikely. Highly unlikely. And we let this motherfucker. We like, I, bro, do your thing. Got the ropes loose and let him run. Yeah, I think he yeah. had one or two days of training, and then was like, there you go. Yeah, we can't leave. Get, we can't leave that guy in fucking shipping department. No, way. no, yeah, we're wasting our money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, usually every new employee, like you have a week of training, yeah, and one of the the days you are in the shipping department, yeah. just so you can understand yeah. the intensity at the shipping department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't do it with Nicholas. No, uh, uh-uh. but no, a huge asset. Yeah. I mean, I I've been for those that don't know, I am literally the sole designer for All American Roughneck. Yes, and aid quite a bit in axe and sledge design work. So it's it's uh I mean being having an ownership role in all of these companies and then also being the sole lead designer it is a bit much a bit much it's a lot yeah but the thing is you know it's hard for people to understand because even the new athlete that we had in mm-hmm. he has said a number of times he's like this is way bigger than I thought yeah he's like and the way you guys handle it is exactly how you're supposed to he's like. It reminds me a lot of like the good times in the military, and I'm like, really? Because you know, none of us went to the military. We don't yeah, know. I have no idea. And he's like, he's like, very, very organized. He's like, and everybody's doing their part. And you can tell that things, bigger things are going on here than any one individual person. And I'm like, bro, I really des- I describe it as that. Yeah. And he's like, you can tell. So hearing it from him was pretty cool because he's like, everybody seems to be having a good time too. Mm-hmm. I'm like. Yeah, I was like, because you, you, you gotta you gotta be loose, dude. You can't you can't you can't get all fucking bound up here. It's like we have these little windows of outbursts of like fun and craziness a few times a day. Yes, because it, it goes hours of like <sighs> screen time, four or five hours, ten minute break, complete fuckery. Yes. And I'm then gonna make fun of you. I'm gonna make fun of you. We're gonna have some snacks. How's it going? How's it going? Good yep. to see you. Good to see you. Fuck you. Back to work. Yep. <laughs> Literally, that's how we function. But, and I, uh, you know, I think, uh, yeah, 
It's cool. But it's, it, cool. it's really cool to see all the departments like firing on all cylinders now yes. and, and seeing this person's work, this person's work, this person's work all coming collectively to a head and it, it all getting done and completed. And I mean, from our perspective as the owners looking in on the company, it is just, it's outstanding oh. to see how everyone works together. You, in society, you know how everybody gets up in arms about ownership and employees? Well, there's a certain way to do it. Mm -hmm. When you have employees, you create a good working environment. That's all you have to do. Create a sound working environment for your people to grow. And then as they grow, whenever there's time, whenever there's opportunity presents itself, your employees show the initiative because they enjoy the working environment to go after bigger and better things. It's as simple as that. Yeah. As long as you aren't a, a fucking piece of shit as an owner and treat your people with dignity and respect and, and create something great, thing, good things are going to occur. And here, it's really intense. Yeah. You just got to gotta, gotta roll with it, dude. Got to. But good times. Yeah. Good times. Mm -hmm. So what else has everybody been up to? wonder what everybody's been doing. wonder if everybody is... Since we've been gone, I'd love to talk to people. Like, they just ask where the podcast is. Yeah. And it's like, so within the time that we've been gone, we've just got done talking for fucking 40 minutes mm -hmm. about us leveling up here at this company, which is incredible because that's what you're supposed to do. But I really hope that everybody listening, everybody watching is doing the same in their life. Mm -hmm. I really hope that they have had the same opportunities for themselves to level up and do good shit and and at a time and, and create opportunity whenever that opportunity presents itself fucking wrap that bitch up and run mm -hmm. i really hope that occurred i mean it, it's uh watching all the facebook groups yeah. axe and sledge the demo crew dude everyone's after it it, it almost it with all the fucking nonsense that's going on in this world mm -hmm. I feel like we live in our own world. We do. And it's not just the 40 of us at this company. It's the 7,000 demo crew members. It's the tens of thousands of people in the Facebook group. <clears throat> like, these are all of our people. Yeah. And I, I feel like living through these Facebook groups and seeing all their shit, because I'm in them every day. I yeah. don't comment much, but I look at everyone's stuff. And, dude, people are getting married, having kids, buying cars, buying homes, buying second homes getting that promotion, leaving a job on a whim, starting their own business. Bro, people are after it. And if you can look at that as a snapshot, I think the majority of Americans are after it. And we see a lot of just the bad. We see a lot of the bad on the news. We hear all the worst shit that's going on. I think the majority is out there killing it right now. I really do. I, I, I know you're right. Watching it in the face groups, you, Facebook groups, you do see it. Mm -hmm. and, and I really do hope that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you've got to do the work. Yep. So you, you just do the work. Mm -hmm. Good things will occur. Yep. There will be hard times. There will be intense times. But do the work. Yep. Be a good motherfucker. Do a good job. Just keep showing up. Yep. 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 So what else did we have? Uh, oh, we got a new warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adding one more. We, <laughs> it's it? it's yeah, full. I just saw it. That one's full now, too. <laughs> Fuck me. Again, Pat and Mike with everything that they do on the back end, outstanding because that is a big racket. Big racket. It's, yes. Moving, moving millions of dollars in inventory around, keeping track of it from... A, a, an ownership to management to employee perspective is very difficult to do. Very hard. And and I have such oh, look here, I have such a profound respect for everybody that owns companies in their respective business that mm -hmm. do a good job. Mm -hmm. Because when you got big things going on, it's a little intense, and it's 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 good. That's what we're supposed to do. That's why that's why this was such a big deal. That's why the HMA podcast was huge. Yeah. Because it's for all the hard work and motherfuckers in their respective lives. Yep. No matter what it was, like, like everything that you're doing, whether it's carpentry, concrete work, being a chef, fucking whatever, mm -hmm. doing it to your to the best of your abilities and making sure that everybody feels you doing it, mm -hmm. and that's the goal. And 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 I think that we 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 embody that. 
yeah. for for sure. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, another new warehouse. Yeah, we that's good. ideally we would love something under one roof. Mm. We Maybe would love be a good that. Idea, huh? We're willing to build. We would love some land though. We'd love to find a nice piece of land that we could put a big fucking building on, or find a building that's not a complete pile of shit. But that hasn't. We haven't crossed that bridge yet. Because again, here I'll say it. The reason is, you know what? We can find land. There is land for sale just an hour away. Yeah. If we were to move everything that we do 45 minutes away, we would lose people. Yeah. And we can't do that. No. Our group of people, our people, are what make us us. Mm -hmm. And we can't lose that. Mm -hmm. I don't, we, we can't lose that. No. That'd be bad. Mm -hmm. uh, the disconnect would occur. It, it's not good. That's not how it's supposed to go. Yeah. So that's why we're we're expanding, and you know our uh, our leaseholders are super people. <laughs> they love leasing us more shit. <laughs> Growing again, huh? How you doing today? Yep. Need some more? Yes, yes, I do. Would love to give you some more. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Really love another forty thousand across the street. If you Good don't mind. Man. Yeah, love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn it. But other than that, that's been life. That's been business. Mm -hmm. um, huh. Yeah, new staff, new buildings, new athletes. Shane, killing it in his life. Yep. Respectively. Going on a vacation. Yeah, went on vacation. Went on vacation, going on another one. Yeah. A little frowned upon there. A Even little, though you do have, like, paid days of. off. Yeah. Uh, I mean. First vacation since... 2019. <laughs> I did say on another podcast that you better take a vacation because they're not carrying over. Yeah. Oh, that's you right. You guys do did. remember, so he's yeah. capitalizing yeah. on that. Yeah, your days don't carry over. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I'm zeroing my days out on this next one. Are you really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, yes, I am. I'm going to make sure there are zero PTO days. Yes, boss, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know but the thing is like when people aren't here and they're on vacation i genuinely miss them yeah i'm like oh man i mean i really wasn't expecting to shane like shane to completely disconnect for a yeah, week he really thought turned it off i thought i was gonna hear from you a little bit more <laughs> nope when <sighs> shane went on vacation he turned his phone off it was also release week it was fucking release week and all he's talking about doing all week is drinking and having a good time and we're like motherfucker you better not be drunk thursday night at eight o'clock thursday night we can't have y'all tuned up okay bud didn't it, didn't and then all of a sudden 7 30 hey guys how's it going be like you mother shane really glad you're enjoying vacation freak it out i hate you right now <laughs> I'd, I'd shit ready uh, 15 days before release night, right? And then Mike was like, that's cool. Better fucking check it again. That's what scared the shit out of me. I'm like, hold on. We have never been so far ahead. Something's wrong. Oh, it's fucking funny. Fucking funny. <clears throat> See, but that's the thing. That's, that, that's what's funny about all this because nobody knows. This, this is how people knew about all the back end things going on. Mm -hmm. And the, the fact that, like, I mean, everything goes off with, they go off with little to no hitches. Yeah. Hiccups here and there, and Shane, you, the customer service team, they button things up, mm -hmm. and everything goes well, but it's like, uh, like a holy fuck moment. Yeah. Good job, Shane. Thanks. Where are you going on vacation next? Uh, Arizona. Mm. I'm going to uh, Grand Canyon, Sedona, and Phoenix. America's vagina, the Grand Canyon. Yep. <laughs> Deep. Deep. <laughs> Wide. <laughs> Never Wet. thought of it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona, beautiful yeah. this time of year. Going to a Cardinals game. Are you? The uh, they're playing the Texans. Good deal. Love yep. baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big baseball fans. God damn it. Oh, how about everyone giving me such a hard time for saying I was a big Steelers fan? Bro, I Christ, can't, I can't say do, anything. How do people not know that you are a complete fuck off when it comes to sports? They're like, what about the fucking Tampa Bay? What about Tom Britt? <laughs> but I live Guys, in Pittsburgh. I got fucking tickets. I got I'm, sweet tickets for free. I'm going to the fucking game. I was a Raiders <laughs> fan for all I care that day. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. No, it's... <laughs> I, uh, that's, uh, you do that really well. You do that really well. Apparently too well. Like just embrace the, whatever is going on. You're like, 
fuck yeah, I'm living. Give me a Steelers jersey. Give me a Pirates jersey. Win the Pens play. Let's go. And then you're like, well, they lost. So, big Giants fan. They're playing tonight. <laughs> like, fuck it. Yep. It's supposed, it, and I do believe you are supposed to just enjoy, enjoy it. Because everything is so polarized and everything is so... Uh, one sided. It's kind of like, hey guys, just just enjoy the fucking show. The gambling is out of control, though. That's, yeah, I I can't believe the gambling. Mm -hmm. It's big. It's because you can do it on your phone now, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's out out of control. And now, because I never I never was a big gambler. I bet on fucking some football games and stuff. Like back in the day, you look Saturdays, you have ten bucks, twenty bucks, two two parlays, ten bucks a piece, something like that. But fucking people are big gamblers. They're like, yeah, it makes the games more entertaining. And I'm like, so you like bet on a lot of games. Oh, yeah. Like 100 bucks a weekend. I'm like, if you put 100 bucks a weekend, like do you win anything? Yeah, sometimes. I'm like, boy, this is intense. I'm so bad at it. I'm I am so horrible bad. Horrible at it. Yeah. <laughs> horrible. Whether like I'm going for like an underdog type win, like with a big payout, mm -hmm. or I'm going with the sure thing, yeah. I lose. I feel like no matter what I choose, the opposite is going to occur. Yep. Like... Uh, you know, during the Lions game, Lions Packers, I was a little tuned up, sitting on the couch, kind of falling asleep, and the Lions were up, and I'm like, seems like a good opportunity to throw a hundred bucks at it. Yeah. Wake up two hours later, not a good idea to put hundred bucks on it. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, fucking coming back, lighten it up. Um, going back to the uh, supporting teams thing, so I'm going to Arizona, so I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to be a big Cardinals fan. Yeah. So I bought a shirt and a hat, right? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I was like, all right, well, I'm going to be there for, for about a week, and I, I might need something else. So I get hit with an ad on Fanatics, and they're like, oh, yeah, get an Arizona Coyotes hat or something. <laughs> I don't like the NHL, and I'll watch it, but I'm like, I might be a big Coyotes fan. Yeah. So I, but I didn't realize. I was like, when the fuck did they become the Arizona Coyotes? Like I always knew them as the Phoenix Coyotes. They changed their name in fucking 2014. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't even know that. Same place. Same exactly. place. No big deal. Same state. Yeah. Same state. Yeah. Close yeah, no enough. Big deal. Yeah. Big so. Krakens fan over here. Mm -hmm. I hate Seattle. I'm not, a, not a huge fan of the, the city, but love the hockey team. Mm. They are hockey, right? Yeah. 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 I knew that. The Krakens. <laughs> yeah. Football season is back. Really great to see stadiums full, huh? Is it not wild to see that all? So that that game, Kim's never been to an NFL game. Oh, yeah. I have to say, too, I've only been to an NFL preseason game myself. Oh, you've never been to a big game. I was at uh, two Eagles preseason games. That's it. Um, we were walking towards the stadium pretty late for the game, of course. Yeah. But uh, Kim's like, I can hear... Because that from the stadium, I'm like, babe, I was like, it's fucking packed in there. She's like, there's going to be like no like open seats. I'm like, this isn't a restricted event. I was like, this is an open fucking event. Yes. We walk in, the board says fucking 68,000 in attendance. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. You could feel it, dude. Yeah. And, and something I've never saw, she walked in and she's like, look at all these fucking people. I'm like fuck yeah awesome. i was like it's back it's awesome yeah see what games are a lot of fun yeah it was a lot of fun you see true yinzers oh true yeah. yinzers yes yeah. they stick out like a sore thumb the pittsburghians yeah for everybody that doesn't know do you think everybody knows what a yinzer is i'm not sure no they don't oh really no this who is who is in story time oh uh when sierra was in uh-huh she was like i heard her say y'all a couple times right mm -hmm. i was like you ever hear yins and she's like She's like, what? I was, like, guys. I was like, Yin's guys. Yin's guys. Bro, people have no idea. So here in Pittsburgh, there is an accent. We probably discussed accents, Pittsburghian accents here. Yeah. It is a horrible, dirty, it's ugly, rough. disgusting accent. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. It comes out of me every now and then. It's growing on me. Whenever I start talking about going downtown or anything like that, it'll just start <laughs> popping out. You'll yeah. see the Yin's are come out in me. Um, but it's just a slang accent. Mm -hmm. With words and um, like a, an English dialect, if you will, <laughs> and it is ugly. <laughs> I think it was voted uh, like who's that? What's that? Billy Gardell. 
don't yeah. know. Billy Gardell was on night shows, and I think at that point they were talking about the worst accents in the United States, and <laughs> Pittsburgh took number one. Nice. Okay? <laughs> and he broke out into it. Billy Gardell's a huge comedian, mm-hmm. um, and he broke it. He was the Molly and Me guy. Oh, okay. He's from here. He's from Pittsburgh. Yeah, so he um, so he breaks out in every now and then. It's a fucking riot. But Yin's is uh, you all, but just from Pittsburgh. So they'll talk about Yin's guys. Yin's guys go downtown this weekend, go to Steeler game. I'm like, what did you just say? Excuse me? Excuse me? Was that English? It sounded like one word. <laughs> <laughs> we go down to Strip District. It was good. It was good. Like, it's Cut a an- pie. <laughs> Cut a pie? Cut a pie. What the fuck? A slice of pizza? You <laughs> fucking... You goddamn degenerates. <laughs> but everything here in Pittsburgh is built upon that rough, hardcore, blue-collar mentality. And a and a passion like no fucking other. <laughs> oh, yes. Dude. Passion for sports. And, and it, we've been the city of champions. Mm-hmm. Hockey, baseball, football. We have won world champions in every sport like that. So it's a big deal. And every Yinzer holds it close to their heart. Yeah. Like you'll see people, if you if you come to Pittsburgh around this time, you'll see people going to football games in shorts and there will be Steeler emblems tattooed on people's calves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. All over. I saw them everywhere. Ten, ten, 100% Yinzer. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Good times, though. So many classic jerseys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I saw more uh, Palomalu fucking jerseys than any other fucking I mean, I player. have I have like a $200 Troy Palomalu jersey. Do you? I never wear it. It's just in my closet. Yeah. It's sick as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. He's my favorite Steeler. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love it, it. Very unique. I love it. Yeah, if you want to look up any words from Pittsburgh, Google Pittsburghese. Oh, really? That's the language. Nice. Ah, it is. Mm. Steeler like season. Football season, fall season. You know what else is big? The scary movie thing. Yes. I did not know how big scary movies were. You scary movie guy? Yes. Really? Yep. I don't like them. You don't like them either? I don't like them. I'll watch them. Kim loves them. Oh, really? So we'll wa- I'll watch them. Yeah. See, I didn't know all this. Yeah. Almost everybody in our company, scary movie people. Yeah, they except love them. maybe like a handful. Because mm-hmm. on I was I was uh, talking Nicholas when we went to the baseball game with the Demo Crew Elite. Yeah. We had Demo Crew Elite in, mm-hmm. and they are the elite uh, group of the Demo Crew that just embody everything that we are as a company. Regular motherfuckers that have been with us for a long time support everything that we do. Like so many of you, these people uh, came in from out of town, and we did a bunch of cool shit with them for three days yeah we went to a pirate game in the suite got a little wild everybody got a little tuned up it was a lot of fun Mm -hmm. um but uh that's how i we because uh nicholas Mm -hmm. we were talking to him the day after and he was talking about how he was getting gas and he's like i just got so freaked out because it was late at night and he was at the giant eagle the Mm get-go and like it was dark but then the rafters up there He's like, I just felt like Jeepers Creepers was going to be around. And I'm like, what? Jeepers Creepers? I was like, that was a fucking throwback. And he's like, I love scary movies, but I think they're real. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, and Mike was, I think that's why I don't like that. Mike was in there. And Mike, six foot seven, fucking big swinging dick goes, I hate them. And I'm like, you hate scary movies, too? And he's like, I do feel like they're real. Yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. Yep. And, and they just started bantering back and forth. And I'm like... Okay, and then uh, everybody started chiming in, and I'm like, I didn't know how big of a deal scary movies were. Bro, AMC is one of my channels that I flick through every night. Yeah. Every night, AMC, I'm like, all right, let's see what's on this one. It's a good channel, usually a good movie, something like that. Um, all of October, they dedicate to scary shit. I'm like, fuck this. I ain't watching this. I don't want to go to bed scared. I don't want to go to bed, like, anxiety-ridden, like, fucking massacre, go, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to go get a good night's sleep now. Yeah, it's not happening. It doesn't happen for me. No. No. Then I'm like up all night thinking, God, everything, all right, everything's staged out. Somebody knocks on the door. I'm going to shoot them. Everything's cool. I all start this. running through scenarios. That's what I mean. Yeah. I can't do that. I need a good night's sleep. I need my beauty sleep. I'm getting older. Yep. Got to put my face mask on, you know, lube up, get rid of these crow's, crow's feet. And, and then uh, so we were going through it all, and AMC dedicates an entire month. They're a business. Yeah. Everybody watches that shit. Mm-hmm. 
It's huge. I didn't even put the two together. I just like, I'm never watching this. Meanwhile, they dedicated our entire month because it's huge revenue. Yeah. Huge advertising dollars. <clears throat> huge month for them. Oh, dude, as Huge. soon as October 1st hits, Kim is all over it. Like, really? She, she's looking through the schedule, like, because they put out a schedule That's online. That's what I mean. And she's like, hey, uh, like, the original Halloween's on this night, but then the Rob Zombie remake is on this night. And and she loves all the shit. Like, even the corny-ass fucking Nightmare on Elm Street. Bro. All the fucking Jason movies. Everybody hears into it. Yeah. It's a big deal. I didn't know that. The biggest fan of them all, Zach's wife, Lauren. Really? Biggest Halloween fanatic in our entire company. No shit. She's been buying Halloween shit for over a month now. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. Big fan. Huge fan. Man. Huge fan. Halloween's her shit. So I, do you think then if we were to poll people, they're like, like it's a 70-30 split? I, I would think so. You think, I so? think so? I, I watch th- a scary movie every night during Wait, October. Excuse me? <clears throat> I try to watch a scary movie every night during October. How's that impossible? I, I, I get I get roped into it, but I don't enjoy it. <laughs> I don't. I'll sit there. And it's so funny. It, it feels like that already. I got home last night, and she has, like, pumpkin decorations. Yeah, yeah we're getting ready. We're doing, our, we're doing our house this weekend. I'm like, oh, fuck. I was like, it's here. It's fucking right here. I was excited. I did post that thing this morning on the Instagram and in my stories. Casey Jones. <laughs> I saw it on somewhere. I'm like, fuck yeah, like an OG badass. Yep. And I'm like, screenshot and restored a little faith in humanity. Everybody's like, Casey Jones. And I'm like, you know how good this makes me feel? See, everybody knows him. Like, not one person said Freddy or uh, Jason. Jason. Not one right. person. Yeah. Everybody's like, Casey fucking Jones. I'm like, yeah. Yep. One dude was like, the guy from Law and Order. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it is him. It is him. It's him. <laughs> imagine, imagine being that guy. It's somebody like, like, you're on set or something. You're like, Casey Jones. Casey Jones. <laughs> He's like, fuck you. However, he he is an OG. Yeah. Like like you, you whenever you said it, you were like, yeah. He was like, the OG badass. I'd rather crushed like, on April O'Neil. Yeah. I crushed on April O'Neil. Yeah. I never wanted to be a turtle, like a ninja you, turtle. You couldn't. You I couldn't wanted be a to be him. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that was a good Halloween costume. Carry around the fucking goalie stick. Yeah. With the mask on. Yep. Cool like cut up jean stuff. Yep. Had a nine iron in his fucking. He did uh, he? quiver. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. That was cool. Hockey stick. Uh, that and then he had like some uh, other sort of like. He was good with handheld like combat stuff. Things that you're not supposed to use to hit people with. Yeah. Big sports guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what a sports nut. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh my god! <clears throat> really, really, really fun. I am excited. I've been in really good shape. We discussed all of my great looking and all of you. You are quite the eater now. A little bit much. Um, get a little worried about you. Yeah. But uh, this is thick boy season coming up. I need to make sure. I was going to ask you about it. I was wondering, I'm like, to make sure I'm. I st- I don't know. I don't know, like everything's been going so well. I'm at my lightest. I wake the one day after I did those 443 steps for uh, 9-11. Yeah. I was 204.6 pounds. Holy shit. Little fucking light, buddy. Yeah. Little light. Yeah. I did, I did sweat a fucking river. Yeah. It was out of control down there. It was a little disgusting. I'm like, this is all my sweat. I'm like puddling, walking around puddles. Oh, dude, it's, it's <laughs> But then it's again, you brought it up and I'm like, this is Bob every weekend. Boy, I feel like a pussy. <laughs> I did the stepper for an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, bro, that's a long time on that bitch. Oh, yeah. I, I thought I was going to be okay, and then, like, uh, <laughs> like three, two, three hours later, I just did regular hydrating. I just took, a, I just did a shaker of the grind, mm-hmm. ate, ate a meal, and then, like, two, three hours later, I'm like, what's wrong? I don't feel, I don't feel right. And I'm like, oh, dickhead. Maybe because you just rehydrated and refueled yourself as if that was a regular workout. Yeah. It was not. Mm-mm. Not only did I do an hour and a half, but I did it as intense as I fucking could. Yeah. And, um, but it was, I, I, I started understanding you mm-hmm. and what, and how working out like that is awesome. Mm-hmm. And, and I encourage people to really push themselves to find a level like that. Cause it was intense. Yeah. Um, yeah, like either whether it's intensity or or just long duration, duration uh, dude, it does something to the mind. It it, does. It's something fucking different. I got really pissed off like an hour in, like fifteen minutes into my second the uh, second forty five minute stint. Yeah, like I just was like, 
you know, I'm kind of pissed off because I was thinking a lot about what occurred on 9-11, the state of the country and all these things. Mm -hmm. And I got a bug up my ass. So I was just pushing myself hard. And I thought to myself, again, with you, I'm like, this is probably some of the emotions you go through, digging up a lot of things that bother you mm -hmm. to just because that's what uh, I think that's what a lot of people that are in professional sports, like why Tom Brady or even big time athletes kind of just continually have that chip on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. They're always thinking about it. Yep. They're always pulling it out. And it's like, calm down. And it's like, kind of like, no, I don't want to calm down. I don't think I can. I don't want to calm down. I kind of like keeping it there. It makes me feel something. Yeah. Yeah, it was unique. Yeah, I only, I only like get to that place like once a week. Like, because I'm getting in such good shape now that I only like feel it for like the big, big shit. Like mm. yesterday was a big, big day for me. Like oh. I had a swim, bike, run all in a row. Yeah, mini Ironman yesterday. For and the dude, by the time I was finishing up my run, I was in tears, like legit sobbing like a fucking baby. And no rhyme or reason. I wasn't sad, upset, happy. I was just, it just finally, like I hit it, I was done, and it poured out of me. It's wild. And then once that pours out, I'm like, whew, I take a shower, I get my shake, and I'm like, Finally, <laughs> I and, and, and you saying that like I, I get it, mm -hmm. but some people may not no. Might be like, why? Why is it so emotional? Mm -hmm. Watching you do it all like and, and then like seeing the amount of work that it is. It's not like bodybuilding and it's not like any weightlifting event. It is something that literally is consuming your life for long periods of training. Like the amount of energy output is what's was what my, blows my mind. Yeah, that wild amount because mm -hmm. it's not forty five minutes, it's not two hours, mm -mm. bitch. It's six hours some days. Yeah, yeah. Saturday was six hours. It is what a full <clears throat> fucking blown pushing yourself. That's wild. You got to be able to go to some places and and reach and dig. Mm -hmm. for some different places that you haven't been. And yeah. some people, I, I've never been there. And, and it's always different. Like yesterday, the, my bike ride yesterday was only an hour, but it was it was climbing this giant mountain on the, the digital screen. And, dude, it's fucking very, very hard. And it's hard from minute one to minute 60. Man. And I'm like 10 minutes in, and, like, my head was not in it. <sighs> So, like, it makes it even harder. Like, you legit yeah. just want to get the fuck off. You're like, this is it. It's not my day. And then, like, I get a little bit further in. And by the time I'm oh on that last God. interval, which is there's seven intervals in an hour, that seventh interval was my best one from the whole hour. See, everybody can relate to that, though. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Saying this isn't my day in the gym. Yep. And then end up, like, all of a sudden hitting a PR. Ended up being the best fucking workout of the week. Yeah. Yep crazy yeah so i chase i chase that feeling man there's nothing like it in this world no. all, all my cool cars and all the cool shit i do it's fun i love it but that feeling dude I, i'd pay big money to feel that all the time i can't remember who said that somebody said that to me <clears throat> they were discussing you know all about money and how great it is to be financially free but uh it was jeff galia JG, yep. he stopped over over the weekend. Yeah. So um, he stopped over and he was, we were just talking about, he, uh, he commended me because I'd spoke up at our school board meeting and his wife works at, you know, in the district. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, cause I, I went in there and I, I, I spoke up for the, the, uh, the environment that our teachers teach in and our kids learn in. Yeah. And I said how I think we as a district can do better. And I offered my assistance, like, do I need to buy like, air conditioners for each classroom. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do because I think it's I think it's below par. Mm -hmm. Like I'm willing to help. And uh, the superintendent turned me down. He's like he's like he didn't answer my question. Apparently you're allowed not to answer my question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was a little pissed. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, all right, dickhead. So I'm I'm offering you my money to help better the school district and you still don't want to take it. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and she was like, she's like, really, really great. You know, thank you. And a lot of teachers said that too. I'm like, I just want to create a good working environment yeah. for the teachers because, you know, if, bro, if you're in a shitty working environment, you're not going to give your best. And at the end of the day, the, the students are our end goal. 
So why would we not make sure everything's great? But anyway, he stopped over, and we were talking, and he's like, hey, dude, I really want to – we've been friends. He's the one that pulled me out of my shit. Yep. You know what I mean? And he's like, hey, I really want to thank you for pushing all the good shit for telling young men to be young men, to work hard. They can make mistakes – you can make a mistake, but you can pull yourself out of it. You're going to make a mistake whenever you're young. You're going to make a mistake whenever you're old. You're going to make a mistake as a father, a business owner. You're going to make mistakes, but just keep working hard. And he's like, and you tell a lot of young men to keep working hard and be proud of themselves. <clears throat> and uh, he's like, I want to commend you for that. I'm like, Jeff, that means a lot coming from you because you help me, you know. And he's like, the reason is, and I'm like, oh, man, this should be good. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like. Because a lot of the stuff you're preaching, you can't buy. And I'm like, I'm like okay. I'm like, yeah. And, but he's like, you can't buy hard work. You can't buy a set of man hands. You can buy anything on the fucking internet that you want. But you cannot buy a set of fucking dick skinners. And I'm like, no, you can't, Jeff. And he's like, I earn my hands. I earn my money. And he's like, and you tell people to be proud of that and earn their money and work hard for everything they want in life. I'm like, that might be one of the best badges of honor somebody's like I could wear if Fuck somebody yeah. has said to me. Mm -hmm. And um, and it embodies what we do as a company. And hearing him say that and, and thinking about it, and like you just mentioned, out of everything that you have, the cars, the house, the, the company, the work that you do the effort that you put into something, you can't buy that. Mm -mm. You can't buy it. You got to work for it. You got to earn it. And it is such a cool concept. And, you know, since we're always in it, I never really, I don't step back like he sees it or like some other people see it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> it was super cool. It, it's such a, it's such a big thing for you personally as a, as a human being. Oh yeah. You know, take take your occupation out of the out of it. Take your role at home out of it. Um, it's those types of feelings, whether that's your hard work you're putting into your job or into fitness or your big goal. That that's what's making you a human being, and I think it's the most like uh, refined yet simple thing we can do as people but the most important for sure me working on me is is the best thing i can do for everyone in my opinion and you can't buy it yep and no one can take it you're not mm -hmm. taking that away mm -mm. super cool jg <laughs> for for his i've known him for so long and so many people wrote him off as a as a dumbass but he is just looks at things way differently it's such a breath of fresh air because a dude works hard, loves his family, and he in he's he is everything that a hardworking motherfucker stands for. Mm -hmm. Loves his community, always willing to help people, even whenever uh, things didn't go right, or even whenever he fucked up huge, mm -hmm. or any mistakes he made. He's like, yeah, I gotta wear it and I gotta move on, and and that's exactly what everybody has to do. Whenever you fuck up, it's like, all right, dude, you know, there's no way you can go through life without making a mistake. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can do is continue to move on and work hard and, and keep moving forward. Can you imagine like if you never met Jeff, no. like, like, like the values, like if your values would have carried through your entire life, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, it's crazy to think that like, yeah, it, it wouldn't change, but like, Oh my God, dude, there's, there's situations that literally change people forever. It's like you meeting Kenny. Yeah. Okay. And how it changed. Like you just watched it. We were talking about it in the beginning of this. Yeah. Me, I've known Jeff for so long, but when I worked with him doing some of the most hard, intense manual labor I've ever done, he was finding everything good around the corner. Mm -hmm. And it's not that Jeff is the greatest person on the planet. It's not that Kenny's the greatest person on the planet. It's at that split fucking moment. At that time period in your life, you were able to gather something that changed how you look at everything, how you feel about life, and what you're going to do from this point on to do great things. Yeah. That is what you're supposed to look for every single day in life, mm -hmm. those opportunities, because that's what that is. Mm -hmm. 
fucking I'll never forget them rough days. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I did. I forgot about them now. And then now reliving this talking about him mm-hmm. and what he said and how awesome. Like, not everybody is always excited to see people do successful shit. Yeah. Sometimes you get haters. I have them. Mm-hmm. You have them. People that just like watching your shit to fuck with you. He was so genuinely excited because it means that other people are doing good things. You don't always get that. And he genuinely is excited to see us do well. Yeah. Pretty cool. Good guy. GG. He's a good, he's a good man. Fucking, dude, the, oh the, king, the king of like bumper sticker sayings. <laughs> Truly is. Like literally has a dozen just from the stories that you've told me over the years. Bro was wild as fuck back in the day. <laughs> And that's that's the crazy thing, because as we grow up, and I know personally, like, there's still wild things in me that I can't get rid of. Mm-hmm. I can't get rid of them. They're still in there, and I still get anxious from them. I still want to be a wild fuck, and I still want to do, like, trouble. Yeah. I st- yeah there's, it's still in me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're not, you're not that anymore, though. And then I think about everything, like, just now I'm just reliving moments. I think back whenever we were 20... 21 and i'm like holy fuck oh my god we were fucking nuts Mm -hmm. crazy wild motherfuckers and then now here crazy successful business two beautiful kids wife wonderful homie built his own home yeah (laughs) created his entire land pulled out every fucking tree on his property by (laughs) did it himself Created a nice land, used all the logs to do other cool shit on his property with. Like, dude, a man of the land and a hardworking motherfucker. A man's man. Oh, bro, Jeff is it. And he's fucking. <laughs> but it's like, it's funny because all them wild shit grew up into this fucking upstanding young gentleman that just wants good shit. Yeah. Two, two young sons. He said his kids are. Fu- I'm like, brother, your kids. Fucking huge heads. <laughs> just. <laughs> Hit him with a baseball bat. And like, <laughs> yeah, bounces off. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. But, yeah, we got on that because it was thick boy season. Big eatings. It's good times. It's coming. But, yep. Man, good times. Yeah. Do you have any questions, Shane? No. No good questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's a firm no. <laughs> it's a firm no. We've asked oh, every good. question under the sun. Uh no, this has been awesome, everyone. Yeah. We are back. We will be doing the podcast every single Wednesday morning. Yep. 8.30 on here. If you have some questions, might as well throw them in the DMs. Yeah, please Let's do. hear them. We're, all, we're coming back. This is going to be something we are very scheduled, regimented people here at Axe and Sledge, All-American Roughneck, 4DH Incorporated. <laughs> we are organized now. Have to be scheduled. Otherwise, it'll be a fucking nightmare. Yep. Every Wednesday 8.30 a.m., we will be recording a podcast with us three dickheads, yep. and it will be a great time. Again, everyone, thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Keep track of all of Bob's running. Try and keep up. It's a little intense. Um, other than that, we have so much more great shit planned coming in the future. Stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram. All the YouTube stuff we have coming, all of it. And follow Shane. He's handsome. He posts a lot now, too, right? No, not really. <laughs> it was like a couple days. It was a few days. <laughs> you were doing good. <laughs> Maybe I'll get back on the wagon. Great job. Everybody, thank you. I love you. Keep fucking shit up and being a hard-working motherfucker. Bye-bye.